much does getting a college education increase your salary? Well, according to the most recent data that I could find, the average weekly pay for somebody who had only graduated high school was $746 a week. And for somebody who had graduated with a bachelor's degree, that number was $1,248. So that's a $502 difference every week. That amounts to a $26 thousand dollar difference over an entire year well that's a pretty big difference between getting a college degree and a high school degree and the salary that you get but how much of that is caused by going to college and how much of that is caused by other factors that we don't see i'm gonna try and explain that with this cardboard tube what does cause and effect mean in economics? We're much more familiar with the term when we look at things in the physical world, like if I drop this, it causes it to fall, and that cause is through gravity, right? But this will not fall as long as I hold on to it. So it's me letting go, <laughs> I'm trying to grab it so it doesn't fall, but it's me letting go that causes it to fall because of gravity. So that's easy for us to understand in the physical world, but what does it mean in economics? Well, let me try to explain it through this. So this is going to be going to college. So you can see here you have the gray thread, you have the gray thread going down here and it attaches to that big salary. And you have the uh, yellow thread right here, attaches here. It's a smaller salary, right? It doesn't have the extra dollar on it. Well, if I go to college and it causes me to get a higher income, then the student, this my right hand right here, when he pulls on this lever, should get the higher income right? Meanwhile, a student over here who pulls on the high school lever shouldn't get that higher income. They get the, the lower one, right? But what if this student who went to high school now goes to college? What will happen? Will that student then pull up the higher income? Oh, well, it looks like that student still didn't get the higher income. The student did not get the higher wages caused by going to college. Well, what about, you know, it's not because this is broken, right? The person who's going to college is still pulling up the higher. Oh no, I pulled off the, the money. But what if this person who went to college went to high school instead, dropped out of college, didn't actually go? Will they pull the higher income? Yeah, this person still pulls the higher income. Okay, so what is it about the person attending, about the hand that's pulling this that actually causes these things to move. Obviously there's something hidden here and we want to understand what is hidden and how we can understand what the actual causal effect is using economics. I promise you I'll explain how this works, but let's try to understand what I mean by the hidden factor. And to do that, let's ask the question, does playing in the NBA cause you to be taller? Now that's obviously a silly question. No one would believe that that's the case. But when you do a simple comparison and say the average height of somebody who plays in the NBA is six foot seven, and the average height for a male born in 1980 is five foot 10 and a half, that looks like the NBA causes people to be taller. That's the same comparison that we're doing with the college versus high school, right? College degrees, we're saying they make a lot more money than people who go to high school. Well, people who play in the NBA are a lot taller than people who don't play in the NBA. So is it the NBA causing you to be taller? Well, that's exactly what's going on here, right? Like here you have somebody who plays in the NBA and they get the taller one. I should have reattached that dollar, huh? They pull up this side, right? They are taller. But if you were to take that person out of the NBA and have them pull this over here, they still end up being taller, right? It's nothing about being in the NBA that makes them taller. Whether they're in the NBA or not, they're still pulling what we would call the tall string. So why are people in the NBA taller? Well, because the NBA attracts people who are taller. It is a magnet for tall people because it promises a really high return if you can get into the NBA. You can make so much money by getting into the NBA and so, the tall people go and the tallest people are the ones who end up doing the best in the NBA. And so then you get the average height of an NBA player is six foot seven. And it has nothing to do with the NBA causing it. It's all about the NBA attracting tall people. Well, there's a similar issue in education. Colleges 
attract talented people. They attract the type of people who are already ambitious, who are already focused on achieving a lot. They are people with high skills who can get through college. Because colleges attract high achieving people, it looks like when people go to college, they pull the high salary. But the problem is a lot of the people who attend college, if they were to just go over and attend high school, they were to stop at high school, they would still pull that high salary. The classic example of this is like people like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg. But the new examples of this going forward are gonna be people like Mr. Beast. They start college, they realize that's not what they wanna do, they leave, and they still have the ambition, the drive, the instinct that gets them a high salary. So there are hidden variables in all this. The hidden variable in NBA Heights is that the NBA attracts tall people because they score easier. The hidden variable in college is that it attracts people with a certain set of skills, and those are the same set of skills that are rewarded in the market. The hidden variable here is something with the way the threads are arranged. I, oh, so sad destroying this thing. It's been, you should have seen my kids' faces when I did this for them the first time. Hopefully you did the same thing. So the hidden variable here is that these are actually wrapped around each other. And all you have to do is hold one of these strings down to get the other one to come up. So I'm gonna hold this one down and let's see if this works. Uh, it pulls this side up, pull it back down. But guess what? When I hold this one down and grab this side, it also pulls that one up because these two things are linked. So when I'm pulling on this string, it pulls the gray string over. Pretty cool trick, right? It, and it explains hidden variables. There's some hidden variable that's explaining the relationship between what you pull and the outcome you get. The idea is there's a hidden variable about who goes to college, and this applies to so many other things. What's the causal effect of becoming a subscriber to market power, right? Is it because people who subscribe to market power are just naturally smarter and more gifted than the average YouTube watcher? Or is it that this channel actually makes you a better person? You can find out by subscribing to this channel. So let's get back to the main question. How much is college worth? Well, there's been lots of studies in economics trying to isolate what is the causal effect of education. Once we take out all those things about your natural abilities, about your drive, all those things, let's remove those and let's just say, let's take somebody from high school who would have stopped at high school and let's put them into college. How much is their salary going to increase on average? A consistent finding across many studies is that a year of education increases your salary by eight to 10%. Now that's for every year. That means every year of college, you increase your salary by another eight to 10%, which means out of this difference we observe between salaries in high school and college, education, the causal effect of education, not your skills and ability, explains about 54 to 70% of that gap. And that means that 30 to 40% of the difference can be explained just by the type of person you are. But that shows that college still does have an effect on increasing your wages. Now, if you're interested in learning more about these studies that tell us about how much a year college is worth, let me know in the comments below. But while you're waiting, go ahead and check out some of these other videos where we try to understand causal mechanisms in economics. We'll see you next time on Market Power.